Cut it no more. I go shine. Holy fuck. Holy fuck. Oh fuck. Kill me. Oh my god. I'm a fucking machine gun. I am machine gun. Holy shit. Hey guys, it's Koga here again. Hope you guys enjoyed the intro a bit. Did a little bit of work in there, make it a little spicy. Um, welcome to an update guide on the Poison Assassin starter build that I started last week. You know, I really liked Poison and what they did to it and having the Assassin bring, bring him back to life was probably one of the best things DGD did because I missed it. So I based it around the Wasp Nest Claw because it's very easy to build around, you know, it's a budget claw. And I wanted to get as much clear speed as possible while having a lot of damage to clear the end game and as you can see here that shit runs like a freaking monster everything's on crack going at god speed because with all the attack speed and whirling blades oh my god you're zooming through freaking maps like nothing and you really especially with the chain from corbel lash you really just blast through things like nothing and i was going map after map and it's been pretty freaking fun unfortunately i really wanted to try venom gyre but i think the fact that corbel lash already has the chain already inside of it inside of it quote unquote <laughs> has chain already in the gem um it kind of makes venom guy hard to even you know like use they even question using actually because it just it needs something to get to be good you know it's specifically spears and without pierce it just kind of falls behind corbalash and you gotta invest into pierce because of that so it doesn't seem worthwhile and corbalash you get a level one so you can just use it from the beginning the minute you enter um you know, Act 1, I believe. I believe you get it pretty quickly. If anything, at the beginning of the freaking game. I think once you kill, kill Brutus. And if not, it should be... Not even. I'm pretty, it's very early. You get that early level 1 and you can just use it. I'm pretty sure it's after you enter the Twilight Trend. Or maybe after you get the damn... Um, after you hit Muff Flight or something like that. And it's been, it's been fun. And so far the damage has been pretty good. I've been using only a 5 link. All these videos you're going to see here are only a 5 link. Especially the, the Legion. And everything and i'm going through the maps as well and have been no issues with a single target on a five link so i hope you guys like it so let's get into the to the main guide hey guys we're going to the gist of the character now the character's name is fanged miasma miasma for poison and i named the fanged because cobras have fangs and they're poisonous i don't fucking know that's what i named it um the character's level 85 it's not yet to complete end game uber all there in the guardians you know just yet but i wanted to make an update because things have changed since when i did the starter guide a week ago when the league came out now when his character hits level 90 or when it kills uber elder i'll post another video so you guys can see what his maximum potential can be so let's get into the gear the claw that i'm using is the wasp nest this claw has increased fist damage the attack speed and the crit chance basically the gist of what you want and then it has accuracy which is amazing um because you're not going to use the light cost today in this build which gives you that um tax cannot be evaded Saves a lot of money, keeps it budget friendly. And the main thing about this claw that makes it so good is that attacks with this weapon deal 80 to 120 added chaos when enemies against enemies that are affected by at least five poisons. With a lot of attack speed, you hit five poisons like this. And it's basically a miniature added chaos six link or seventh link in this case. 
that gets added to your damage. Very nice. It affects the base poison, which scales very well. Um, let's continue. Your chest piece. Your chest piece can be almost anything you want. It can be, not you want, it can be your belly of the beast. It can be dendro bait, which I don't recommend because you kind of want the life. This build has a trouble getting a lot of life, so I recommend getting life. And you can use Cherubium's Malev uh, uh, Malevolence, I believe his name. And it's amazing because you can use... Um, you can use It has 100 life and it has extra chaos damage, I think up to 80%, which is very, very good for the build. Um, it also is a dexterity chest, so dexterity gems are going to be easy to place into it. Otherwise, you can also use Euro's Fostering as the attack speed. That attack speed has a crit chance for projectiles, and the skill is a projectile. It has um, a lot of life, I think 90 to 100. I believe, which is very good. And then it, there's one that summons a snake, which gives you added chaos. I don't recommend you relying on it because it dies very quickly. Like, you just imagine a golem with less life. So it's pretty obnoxious. But if you want to use that one, go for it. Now, the, now you could just use a life and res chess piece, but I wanted to get something better. So I chose to get uh, an elder chess piece if attacks have 1.38% or up to 1.5 uh, chance to crit. This affects your base crit, so it affects you know, your overall crit very well. It's basically adding to that 7.68. Now, note though, this is an eye level 84 chest piece. If you don't get it above eye level 84, you cannot get this, or not above eye level 84, it could be eye level 84 or higher. Um, you cannot get the attacks have 1.1 to 1.5. Um, to get the smaller one, because this is tier 1, the tier 2 one, I think is eye level 80, 76 or 75 or higher. And that's, I believe, from 0.5 to 1% crit. I don't re it's not enough it's not good enough so i don't recommend doing that do note that these chest pieces are very expensive so get for a shitty base this is the shittiest base i could probably get for a cheap price cost me 5c any higher you're talking about like exquisite leathers like 30c assassin's garb is reaching the exalts ah uh, this is a budget build especially my first build i do not want to spend that type of money so i got about um i paid 5c for this and then i just alt spammed it until i got that attacks have 1.38 chance to crit uh, to critical strike chance and then I got lucky I augged it and got increased maximum life just regaled it I didn't give a crap what I got and crafted life now actually no if it craft if it hit life then I would have been effed but you know I got lucky so it's good enough for me I don't need the res as you can see here so it works perfect for budgets for your gloves you want attack speed life and then you want an open prefix so you can craft added chaos to it um, if you have the extra muns because I know these are actually not that expensive uh, surprisingly, you can get to one. Um, a tier one. You can get attacks, uh, physical damage to attacks. It does affect your base poison, even though we're not really scaling fizz as much as we're doing chaos. It does affect your base poison, put poison. So it's pretty, it's pretty good, but it's not needed. So don't overpay for that. Your belt. This one is a piece of shit belt. Uh, just get life and res. Now your endgame belt is going to be a Stygian Vise, probably using an Aberrant Fossil. Um, and then you, with the Aberrant Fossil, you can get Chaos Damage on your belt, I think 20 to 28. And that'll be your endgame belt with Life and Res. Your boots, Life Res. Uh, I craft the movement speed because you go zoom zoom with your Whirling Blades. It's so freaking fast. I even have Blood Rage up at the moment. Um, so I don't really need the movement speed, but I crafted it because it's cheap to do. And... Uh, Kind of need a bit of it to walk around the towns and stuff. Um, your shield, life and res. That's all you need. If you can get tax speed or some other things on it, go for it. But it's all I need, so I went for it. It cost me like two aux, honestly. I got the base, used two aux, that's what I got. I kept it. Um, now your helmet. Your helmet's going to be life and res as well. However, I had enough uh, res, so I went for like Star Conja for the extra attack speed, the crit chance. And it has a lot of life. It's cheap and it fit the build, so I put it in. Now, your jewelry. Your jewelry is very important in this build. One, you want rings with whatever res you need. So you want res, life, accuracy, because you want to hit that 100% chance to crit. Uh, crit. 100% chance to hit without lycosidae. Like, and then you want an open prefix for the added chaos damage. Because that affects your base. Now, another thing. On the other ring, you want to make sure that you have an open, I believe this is a prefix, for non challenging skills, have minus 8 to total mana cost. If you don't have this craft, go to global 820, post slash global 820, and ask somebody to if they have this craft. Just put the minus total mana cost craft. People will whisper you, and you want, tell them that you want to craft it on this ring. It costs about 4 chaos, and the minimum is minus 8, which is good enough. 
The reason why this is so important is because if you don't have this, you don't have enough mana to spam Warding Blades 1. Or in 2, you also need a lot more mana to spam your main skill because it's pretty mana intensive. Um, the reason for that is because you want to reserve more mana. I'll go into the reason why we go over the aura gems. But as you can see, I have very little mana here. If I didn't have this, I would need a lot more mana because I would run out too quickly. Now your amulet is going to be... Um, you need strength and intelligence. Those are the two main stats that you're kind of uh, starving for when you're building this character. You want crit multi because you have perfect agony. It gives you half that crit multi for your damage over time. Um, you know, added damage. And then you want life. And again, you want an open prefix for the added chaos damage. That's basically the gist of your jewelry. Now let's move on to the gems. You want um, increased AoE. Uh, increase AoE. Uh, blight. This is Vault Blight, by the way, because it gives you that extra um, enemies take 20% increased chaos damage. Affects the poison. Very nice. And then you want Plague Bear. Plague Bear is absolutely amazing. It's basically righteous poison. And here you see my maximum uh, Plague Value is 797,000. 800k almost. And it's amazing. It's basically, you know, like almost an oh shit button as well for Blight. When you really need to just degen them very quickly. It stacks up your poison until it hits that Plague Value. And then you can just let it out all at once. And it lasts quite a bit. And all you need is to put Increase AoE. And that's it. Oh, sorry. And it freaking scales amazingly. Since this is basically based on the poison damage of the main skill, you don't actually put damage uh, damage gems into the skill. It does not work. It tells you. Um, your damage modifiers do not apply to this gem. So don't do that. Just put increase AoE and you're good to go. Um, your helmet. You want cast from damage taken. Steel skin for that extra buff. It's kind of like a, you know, it's kind of like a little barrier, like a shield for a thousand damage. Um, summon stone golem because we use blood rage and uh, we need that help with the regen. And then blood rage. Your gloves are going to have, this is where that mana cost makes a big deal. Um, War Banner and Precision. Now, before when I made this build, I told you to use Malevolence. And it's because I, I did not know that Summon Skitter Boss were going to be so good. Malevolence increases your damage over time by 20%, 24%, I think like that. 20 to 26% more damage with some skill effect duration. The duration was negligible because you have enough from points from Assassin. So it was basically for the damage, but it was, it was a 50% mana reserved. While Summon Skitterbots here is only 35, which is very easy to do, and it's amazing. This opens up War Banner um, in your mana, and this gives you that extra accuracy and adrenaline, and that allows you to hit that 100% um, chance to hit very easily. It's worth using. Now, what does Skitterbot do? I didn't realize this, but you see these little uh, two robots that I have here. One chills, which is a blue one. I think this one. And then, well, they're both blue. <laughs> the light blue one. The dark blue one here shocks. Now, the shock originally I thought it was only going to be like 10%. Like the shock trap. The vol lighting trap, I mean. But it's actually 20%, which makes it very, very nice in this build. Especially the chill one, because you don't have ice in this build. Um, so, very good for CC and damage. So, it made sense putting in over my, uh, my levelings. Now, the last one's going to be Herald of Agony, and yes, you have four auras, and they all fit, but that's why this is so important. Uh, your boots are going to be your Wither Totem. Wither Totem, you saw, um, with multiple totems, allows you to summon two. Faster Casting, and of course, Bolt Totem. This gives you, uh, it puts stacks of Wither on the enemy, so it takes more Chaos damage. Very important. Your shield is going to be Fortify, Faster Attacks, Warning Blades. Very simple, very uh, norm. And then let's go into your chest piece. Your links for your main, for Corbalash, your main links are going to be Corbalash, GMP, which you swap out for Vicious Projectiles for single target, Vile Toxins, Deadly Elements, and then Unbound Elements. Um, for your 6 link, you want to use Added Chaos Damage, and I'll complete your 6 link once you have it in there. Um, do note that if you get a level 21 Corbalash or level 21 Added Chaos, is a massive deal. So if you can afford it, go for it. That's pretty much it. Now, I'm also, right before going to skill tree, I'm going to talk about uh, what's going to be your end game stuff. Sarkhanja is pretty much end game. If anything, get uh, get the enchantment for Cobra Lash or something that along the lines for Skitterbots, maybe. That helps you out. For your claw, you want to get an Imperial Claw. It gives you the most attack speed and the best base. And you want to use a, I think, 
I don't know if it's corroded fossil or something like that. It's the fossil that allows more poison and, and bleed modifiers. And it has a chance um, to give you 60% chance for poisons with this weapon to deal 100% more damage. You get that and then you craft either a fizz with some attack speed and some crit chance. And it's going to be 100% better than this claw. Um, if you get added chaos, that works too instead of fizz. You can get added chaos and then craft fizz. Very good too. And that would be amazing. That's your endgame claw. Uh, gloves like this are basically your best bet. You're really not gonna get anything else. Like, not even Tomb Fist, because Intimidate doesn't affect Poison, is gonna help you out. Boots, get as much life and res as you can, possibly can. Those are your endgames. Um, rings, like these, are pretty much endgame viable. Um, for a chest piece like this, will probably be a better base with, uh, of course, a six link and probably multi modded to give you more life and more res. And yeah, jewelry is about the same. And that's pretty much your end game stuff. I already explained over the belt using that uh that fossil and the um and the aberrant fossil that gives you more chaos damage. So let's go into the skill tree. You're gonna assassin, your poison assassin, and I recommend the first thing you pick up is Mist Walker. It gives you attack speed and movement speed, very good for leveling up very quickly, skipping through all the acts as fast as possible. Then you can go for Noxious Strike and Toxic Delivery for as much poison uh, damage possible, and it's the most important for your poison. And then I'll pick up Unstable Infusion for the power charges. If you don't like this and you think you have enough crit, go for Opportunistic for that 20% more damage while there's only one rare unique enemy. I don't like it because it's very situational and it doesn't even work for freaking Uber Elder unless you're like in a very specific spot. So I went with Unstable Infusion. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And now let's go into the skill tree. You're gonna pick up all these notes, the Fizz and Chaos, get the attack speed, get the life, and get this crit chance. The crit chance is not going to make that much of a difference, but Corbalash does have an innate 50% uh, damage over time multiplier from crit strikes, so it is up a bit, so I recommend picking it up. Then pick up Entropy and Fangs of the Viper, this helps a lot for leveling because uh, the movement speed and the chaos damage on one node, very good. And then pick up Sleight of Hand. Um, it gives you attack speed, uh, and then the damage from elements with one-handed weapons. This is very good because it's generic, so you can use daggers and claws. Because at the beginning of the game, you're not going to have a choice of which to use unless you pick this character later. Um, pick up Resourcefulness later on when you need the life. I don't recommend it early unless you care about that res. To pick it up later when you have um, when you need the life. After that, come down. Pick up Method to Madness for that extra juicy um, multiplier to Chaos Damage and extra, extra Chaos Damage. Come down, pick up uh, Revenge of the Hunted for the life and res. Pick up these last two nodes later unless you want the life now. Pick it up now. Um, it's up to you. Fatal Toxin is very important for poison. Pick that crap up. Then come up here and pick up the life. Now, if you have a claw already, very important. If you have a claw, pick up these claw notes. Otherwise, skip it and come down. If you already have these claw notes, you can, um, a claw that's decent, you can come here, pick this up, and then continue moving up and picking up Claws of the Falcon, this life, and coming up here. Um, otherwise, I say just skipping the top part and coming down if you have a dagger for the time being. Um, I recommend after that picking up Herbalism. Actually, on a quick note, on a quick note, um, if you have a claw, only pick up these nodes. Don't pick up the top part just yet because you need that chance to poison. You're not going to be at 100% just yet. So pick up these nodes if you have a claw, then come down and pick up Swift Venoms again. For the chance to poison and that amazing poisons you inflict deal damage 5% faster. It's very good. Pick up herbalism. Come up here. Pick up poisonous fang if you have claws. Right? If you have claws. Otherwise, skip it until you have a decent claw. Same thing here. Claws of the pride. Skip it if you don't have uh, a decent claw. Um, Then come up here. Put finesse. Get the heart of oak. Get it for uh, some regen and uh, maximum life and a little bit of movement speed. Uh, you're going to be using shields while leveling up, so pick up Precise Interception. You see attack speed and damage of elements, and it's very good. These life nodes, I picked them up later. If you want it now, pick it up now. But I had enough life while leveling, so I didn't pick them up until later. Uh, after that, then you can come down here. Pick up Toxic Strikes, very good. You want the chance to poison early on. And then pick up Thick Skin. I pick up these two later on because they're only 4%. You know, when you really need the life, like right now. I'm, hitting, I'm close to hitting 5k. Um, but yeah, you should have a claw at this point because this is a claw build. Wasp Nest is a level 60 uh, claw. By then, you shouldn't be able to pick these nodes up. Pick up Claws of the Falcon, and I'm going back up. 
pick up atrophy for that chaos damage and multiplier and pick up ridden blood um quick note phase acrobatics didn't talk about it for a reason um if while leveling if you have decent armor don't pick it up because armor you don't need that much armor while leveling in order to have decent armor same thing with evasion um so i i don't pick it up if i have armor but if you have all evasion gear pick it up because it's only going to help you once you you know once you're like level 50 or something like that just pick it up anyway because at that point your armor isn't doing much so yeah pick it up once you want to basically it's not that important um you need that more evasion now if you see i'm level 85 oh i'm level 85 right now so my last nodes are going to be these this life node uh this jewel and then these jewels now the jewels that you're going to look for are something like this you want maximum life always maximum life because you need this life and then you want either damage or poison damage chaos damage uh global crit multiplier or multiplier while holding a one-handed weapon and that's pretty much the gist of it i believe yeah if you have another one look for it but i think those are the main ones and those are the jewels that you want hey guys i actually forgot to tell you what to anoint so out of these i think the best ones to anoint are either dire torment with a crit chance and the damage over uh, multiplier or you can pick where's the other one this one i really want this one but that silver one is expensive um if you have the currency definitely go for this one instead and this gives you the damage over time multiplier with that special one poisons you inflict deal damage five percent faster it helps with uh killing packs quicker which i like so if i were to go for one i'd probably pick this one otherwise if you want more life your best bet is constitution otherwise those are the main three look around if you see something better and it suits you more go for it those are the ones that i like a quick note if you need some help leveling um you can anoint these ones right here you know the int or strength ones and they usually just require three of the most basic ones you know clear oil sepia and they'll give you those and they'll help a lot when you don't have the stats that you need back to the other guy um yeah that's pretty much covers everything i hope you guys enjoy this build if you can do me a favor you can also follow me on twitch my twitch um the twitch link and the pob by the way for this build will be in the description below i want i'm trying to hit a bit uh to hit affiliate status on twitch and i need 50 followers so i would love if you guys can help me out with that um i'll be soon be regularly regularly posting more youtube videos every week usually on the weekends and if not um it'll be early the week after like in this case it'll most likely be the week after um landing a monday or tuesday for me and yeah that'll be amazing my twitter will be also below if you guys want to hit me a follow or something and i hope you guys enjoy this build a lot i'm having a lot of fun with it so thanks for watching and uh peace out holy shit it begins holy shit it begins to like <laughs>